welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now, today we will take a look at our second figure from the third wave of the collector additions from McFarlane. Now, we already took a look at Green Lantern Batman. Pretty nice figure. It did have its problems, but in the end, I found it rather enjoyable. Now, once again, I did find this Superman at Target in actually the collector's section, not in the actual toy aisle. Now, one thing I really, <laughs> that caught me off guard when I saw it on the shelf was his beefiness. It just stuck out right away. And also the color scheme, which was really eye-catching. So I'm pretty sure a you know, random consumer that sees this on the shelf may be attracted to it. But I don't know when they check that price point of $30, <laughs> they may just, you know, walk it back a little bit. But for me, it was a definite pickup. Now, when we saw the images of this one released online, a lot of people were talking about how bulky he looked. But I think a lot more people were talking about the accessories that come with him. So let's go ahead and get into it and take a look at him. Now, he does look pretty indestructible in the packaging but let's go ahead and take a closer look but first he does come with your standard black dc multiverse stamp the only real difference is that these have a shiny silver paint on the dc emblem which is the only big difference compared to your standard release version he also comes with his data file card now one thing I really love the artwork on this and the premium style of card really pops on this one. You could really see the added attention to the colors and artwork, the shiny silver metallic foil. On the back, you do have some information. Now, one thing I did notice online was that this is kind of based on some very specific artwork in the comics. Not necessarily sure the artist, and this is like a 90s era Superman. Of course, you have the hairstyle and the color scheme, but there's like just a, a specific artist that has some real close resemblance to this figure. And you could kind of take it like that for like its nostalgic purposes, which is what I thought when I first saw the images. But all in all, it's a <laughs> kooky Superman release. Now, I do say kooky because, of course, one of his main accessories is Crypto the Super Dog. Now, I was really wondering if there was any form of articulation on this guy, and there actually is, and it is the head could move side to side. Now, it is sort of just that sliced, you know, chopped articulation, but I'd rather have that articulation than for it to be just, you know, a static little figure now none of the limbs move the tail doesn't move and he actually feels kind of um it's weird to say but sort of like porcelain plastic or something like that so be really careful that you do not drop this guy on any sort of hard surfaces because i feel like the tail or even the legs could really break i mean it has a little bit of give to it with the rubber but if it's cold and you drop them, you're really in danger of losing, you know, appendages. Now, the cape is really simple. It is a cloth cape. Uh, fits them really well. There is no yellow on the back. But the little Superman dog tag really looks nice. Painted really nicely. You have a little bit of detail on the collar. And the dog really looks good. The only thing, like I said, had minimal articulation, but I do think that this was one of the bigger reasons for collectors to buy this figure. Now, he also does come with two alternate hands, which we have seen before. These are these, like, manhandler strangling hands. <laughs> uh, painted a little bit more in a darker flesh tone, but we will accept these. It's pretty cool. 
And of course, he comes with his card stand, which we do not really need. I really wish that it didn't come with the card stand. I know McFarlane has this vision of people putting the card stand next to the figure and then displaying the card. But I really wish that he would have came with a gripping hand. I know that this style of hand right now, there's only two molds, the fist and, you know, these mitts. But if he had a grasping hand, you could put this guy with a flag and make him match a little bit more of the images from the comics and even on the card art. So that was kind of a letdown. Now, I did find that I'm not sure where these came from. These are flight hands, I think, from the two-pack of Ultraman. But if you warm these up, they do fit on the same peg. That way you could have, you know, flight hands. And they pretty much match the skin tone of the figure. So that's just a little tip. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at them. <laughs> now, the first thing that comes to my mind is that you know, little meme or whatever, like, that's a beefy boy. Look at my boy. Because, <laughs> man, this guy looks really beefy. And, you know, right away, let's go ahead and bring out the original Dark Knight Returns Superman. And the reason I want to do that is because just the color difference, you could really see comparing them together, the big difference that color makes because while this guy looks sort of bland and sort of plastic, this guy actually looks re really interesting because they use sort of a matte, almost flat baby blue, and it really pops. And the red, although it is glossy, just highlights the blue a lot more. So there's definitely something there, the way this figure is stylized. But yeah, it does, you know, look kind of weird at first glance. If you're, <laughs> if you're not used to it, this is a very strange looking Superman. Especially because I think they made the head a little bit small. It is basically based on your Superman 1000 head. Just with that, you know, added glorious mullet. But in doing that, it kind of makes them have a little bit of a pea head because... Although this Dark Knight Returns Superman is very hideous, but it's meant to be, the head is sort of a big block head, and it looks right in proportion with the figure. And this one, it just barely, you know, stands out that it's a little bit small. Now, there is kind of a positive about this, and that is that I had plans to try him out on some other Superman bodies. So for the head being small, it kind of works because now it's not too big to go on a more slender Superman body. But finishing up, taking a look at them, love the emblem, love the trunks. They did paint the loops on this version. Like I said before, the colors just really pop, although it is a, a little bit of an unusual looking Superman. I mean, the thickness of him is just, you know, undeniable. Same articulation, I mean, you got that single joint at the elbow, but he does have swivel there, so that kind of helps. Waist is pretty tight. You do get side to side and a little bit of tilt or whirl, but you get no front crunch really to speak of. You do got some thigh swivel in the thighs, which is really nice. So, I mean, same articulation. Won't go over it too much. I think the main attraction of this figure for me is display factor. And also the head looks really fun. Now the head does retain pretty nice articulation for being <laughs> uh, so tight on the body, but he does look down. He can kind of look up if you tilt his head to one side, but it's pretty much held back by the power of the mullet. You got right to left. Rocker. So, I mean, he has a nice enough articulation but I think the main positive of this figure is, of course, that head sculpt. So speaking of that, I did want to try the head on two different bodies. Now, I do have my custom recovery suit, long-haired, bearded Superman, which is basically the same head, just with a beard and with long hair. Now, when I first saw the images of this, I kind of already knew 
I was going to want to try and put that head sculpt on my recovery suit Superman just to see what it would look like. And actually, it fits really well. If you go back to the images of the 90s, this, you know, pops right out of the pages. And like I said, since the head is kind of small for the big bulky body, it actually fits a lot better on this one. So if I can, if people are out there buying this pack just for the crypto and they start trying to sell this Superman, you know, on eBay or whatever for a cheap price, I'm going to probably pick up one or two of them to use the head on some recovery suit Superman. But as we know, McFarlane can always turn around and now use this head to <laughs> make alternate Superman. So, you know, it is a little bit of a roulette when you play games with action figure customizing. Now, I also wanted to try this head on my custom definitive Superman. Now, I kind of knew this was going to work as well. And I really was interested to check out how it was going to look sort of that 90s mullet classic Superman is the image that I had in mind. And of course, yes, when you pop the head on this body, you do get those classic 90s vibes with the power of the mullet. So kind of a mixed bag here because there are some negatives. Does <laughs> a rather quirky looking Superman figure, but you do get a little bit of extra bonuses out of it. Of course, you do get your crypto super dog and he does look very good next to the figure. Now, another thing is scale. That's probably the only other positive thing. And if we bring out the hush Batman, which of course we all know is one of the larger Batman figures, he actually scales up right next to this Batman hush figure. So Pretty tall Superman, if you're going by McFarlane standards. Although, like I said, he is really stylized and has a very unique look to him. I'm pretty happy with it because I could see the possibilities with the head. And also with displaying him, he, like I said before, if you are able to find a gripping hand, put some old glory in there. And he'll look really awesome on the shelf. But anyways, you guys keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one.